Welcome everyone, my name is Majd Rasmi and this is my presentation for my project of a passive country house in Europe. This is the passive design module supervised by Dr. Hanan Talib. Table of contents in this presentation will include the introduction, aim and objectives, site list selection and analysis, client analysis, design concept, design proposal, IE simulation, and conclusion. Passive design maximizes the natural light, heat, and air movement in a specific location in order to create a comfortable interior environment that reduces the need for energy to light, warm, and cool a building. They take advantage of climate, site conditions, and materials to create a building that functions in harmony with the environment. This research demonstrates the techniques for designing a passive country house in Europe and selecting strategies appropriate to climate by introducing passive methods of lighting, heating, and cooling the building. Greece was chosen as the location due to its temperate climate, which is characterized by hot summers and cold winters. Traditional passive design in a temperate climate zone emphasizes cooling in summer while minimizing solar heating in the winter. The aim of this study is to develop a passive country house in Greece, which has a temperate climate that will incorporate passive techniques for both heating and cooling. And the objectives are to uh, minimize energy usage by employing energy efficient techniques and technologies, integration of sustainable features and natural resources into the plan and design of the building, and achieve the maximum comfort in different sections of the building while considering the thermal comfort. Greece, a country in southeastern Europe, is the intended location for the project, specifically a village called Agios Stephanos Aviliots, which was initially a fishing village for the nearby town of Aviliots, located at the northwest coast of Corvo Island. The chosen site for the suggested country house is in a rural open space area with a stunning mountain view. The area is surrounded by a gorgeous vegetation and beautiful beach, which is only 700 meters away. An access road is also available from the west side, making it easy to access the location. It's a quiet and calm environment, perfect for families and anyone seeking relaxation. Optimum sun absorption is crucial for thermal comfort, and this is why the project must be oriented in a way that takes full advantage of the sun during winter and avoid heat gain during summer. Corvo in Greece enjoys a temperate climate with hot temperatures in summer and quite cold, rainy uh, in winter. Annually, the highest temperature averages 21 degrees Celsius, and annually, the temperature drops to an average of 10 degrees Celsius. The average number of sunny hours in a year is 365. Uh, the month of December receives the least quantity of sunlight. The average relative humidity of the month of November is 77%, and the humidity levels are typically lowest in July, with 59% in average. The typical yearly humidity level is 70%. Uh, uh, in case of the rain analysis, uh, usually 30 days of rain or snow in the month of November with low few average wet days in July, which is the driest month. The prevailing wind direction is from the north. The wind velocity high average in February is 18 meter per second, as shown in the figure. The recorded high wind velocity will be in February, reaching up to a velocity of 36 meter per second, whereas the recorded low is in August, which reached 17 meter per second. I have designed and created a logo for my country house in Corvo. This logo, it has a name of Anisi. Anisi means in Greek comfort. So this is the perfect place uh, to relaxation and feel comfortable. The Anisi house consists of a main building, guest room, and small farm with proper accesses from all directions. The guest room ensures privacy while offering unrestricted and engaging viewers, farm and courtyard to increase the natural ventilation and interaction with nature. Uh, by looking at the layout plans, the main building consists of 
ground and first floors. The four bedrooms are located in the first floor uh, with one living room on the ground level. The guest room is simple with a glazed part connected to the inner space. Here is the final proposed NEC house layout based on the previous studies and analysis. The design scheme of my NEC house seamlessly integrates the natural elements of the surrounding uh, environment, highlighting a lively ambience while providing relaxation and comfortable vibes. I will present now the IES simulation for my NEC house. I will start with the base model, then the passive model. After that, I will focus on the strategies, the three strategies that have been uh, used to enhance the passive uh, cooling and heating. Then I will present the data and compare between them. After that, I will come up with the conclusion. First, I will start with the base model. The design aims to improve the thermal efficiency of the building by applying massive cooling and heating strategies as much as possible and considering climate, site conditions, and materials. Now, the base model envelope has specific construction details following the construction standards in Greece. The external walls has U value of 0.29 watt per meter square Kelvin, 0.22 watt per meter square Kelvin for the floor, and 0.18 watt per meter square Kelvin for the roof and single glazing. Depending on the sun shading calculation from IES, the simulations will be carried out at 3 p.m. on 15th of January. 15th of April and 15th of July to present the winter, summer, spring seasons respectively. Here is the simulation of the sun's path in winter for the PACE model. And here the simulation of sun's path in summer for the PACE model. Now I will start showing the enhancement starting with the passive design model. BREEAM, which was released in the United Kingdom, was the first certification program to evaluate sustainability of buildings. And in the passive model, I will change the U value for the external wall, roof, and glazing due to BREEAM. Also, I will change the orientation of the building uh, to get improvement in the result. The passive model is oriented towards the south, assuming that will this will enhance the thermal behavior of the building in winter. The external wall of the passive model is enhanced to A plus system green guide, block work cavity wall with U value of 0.15 watt per meter square Kelvin. The roof of the passive model is enhanced to flat roof form deck constructions A plus green system with 0.117 U value. The external glazing of the passive model is enhanced with double glazing and the new U value is 1.6 Watt per meter square Kelvin. Now comparison between the base model and the passive design model. After simulating the base and passive models, data can be compared. According to the simulation data, the passive model has achieved 18% savings of energy loads in summer. While in winter, the passive model has achieved 2% savings of energy loads after applying the passive model. Energy saving up to 11% after running the simulation in spring. These enhancements actually achieved after changing the orientation and materials uh, in the passive model. The passive model has higher temperature than the base model in summer, mostly in the morning and at night, due to the fact that the passive model is facing south and has high thermal mass envelope components, which store the heat inside the building. And this comparison has been done in summer July between the base model and passive model. Three dates were chosen to be simulated to compare the temperature. 15th of January, 15th of July, 15th of April. The passive model has achieved almost one degree higher than the base model on 15th of January due to the south facing orientation and the materials enhancement in the passive model. Again, for same reasons, in spring, the passive model has a higher temperature than the base one. Now I will show the IES simulation for three passive strategies. Three design strategies will be applied to the passive model for passive cooling and heating. The strategies are thermal mass, 
skylight wind shaft and the sun space for the guest room. Here I will start with the first strategy, the thermal mass. The first strategy to be applied is the thermal mass, and the most commonly used structural elements are concrete slabs and walls. They should be placed at a certain position to receive adequate sunlight, this improving comfort and maintaining moderate temperature in the, in the building. The wall and floor slab are adjusted in all options to have high thermal properties with cast concrete and proper insulation. And this is actually will be the first strategy, which is the thermal mass. After applying strategy number one, the model has achieved additional savings of energy load compared to the passive model. Also during winter, additional savings of energy load compared to the passive one after applying the thermal wall and slab. Another reduction noticed during spring after applying the thermal mass by 8%. With applying thermal mass strategy, the temperature in summer is decreased by 1 degree Celsius, which is uh, showing that this strategy is effective during summer. Now, during winter, the temperature is increased by 1 Celsius degree, which can be considered as an enhancement. And here, in spring, after applying thermal mass, no significant change in temperature. Now I will present the strategy number two, skylight. Skylight and roof windows are openings that are glazed and installed on an inclined or flat roof to increase the amount of natural light that enters into building. In addition to facilitating the ingresses of natural light, windows can also provide ventilation if they are designed to be open or have vents. Like traditional windows, they have the uh, potential to case great heat gain during the summer and essential heat loss in the winter. A minor increase in energy loads compared to the passive model results can be noticed after applying the strategy number two, which is the skylight, which can be explained by the additional areas of the projected skylights and energy loss through the opening or glazing, especially in summer. In winter and after applying the strategy number two, skylight, higher energy loads than the passive model is noticed, and this is again because of the additional areas of the projected skylights and energy loss through the opening or glazing. In spring, no improvement in the energy consumption as seen in the effect. Uh, actually, after applying strategy number two and compare between the air temperature and the passive model and this model, it shows that the uh, skylight cooled the building in the summer due to the natural ventilation effect. Uh, in winter case, it has improved the thermal conditions by 2 degrees Celsius higher than the passive model. It has improved the thermal conditions with 5 degrees Celsius less than passive model. Now the IAS simulation for the strategy model number three is sun space in the guest room. The sun space is a glazed area that face south and are set apart from the main building envelope. It services as an intermediate zone in connecting between interior and exterior of the building and sun spaces can act it as natural ventilation uh, through the openable vents suitable in the shared wall at the upper most part of the sun base. A minor amount increase in energy consumption due to the effect of sun space strategy, which is trap the sunlight and heat inside the guest room. To enhance the design, vegetation and trees are suggested to be added to reduce the effect of summer sun. Now, after applying the sun space strategy in guest room, which is the strategy number three, energy uh, efficiency is improved during winter as the consumption is decreases by 2%. While in winter, the energy consumption is decreased by 1%. This still needs to be improved more. Temperature during summer after applying the sun space is almost the same, and as I mentioned before, vegetation and trees can enhance the results due to their shading effects. Significant improvements were achieved by using the sun space strategy in winter, as the temperature increased by more than 4 degrees Celsius.
Again, the air temperature inside the guest room in spring after applying the sun space is increased. And this is because the effect of sun space as it's captured the heat and light inside. As I said and I mentioned before, vegetation and trees can enhance the result due to their shading effects and also a courtyard can be added to the design. Here is the IEA simulation for CFD analysis. To show the effect of internal velocity, CFD analysis is conducted. Maximum velocity reached 16.4 meter per second on 26th of February at 6 p.m. Uh, so it was chosen as the boundary condition. By applying the skylight, air movement is noticed due to the opening. CFD simulation is conducted to test the pressure created by applying skylight and wind shaft strategy. It shows clearly that the pressure distributed and become less around the skylight opening due to the ventilation effect. As expected in the sun space strategy, the pressure analysis in the CFD shows the high pressure appeared at the top while the low pressure at the bottom. And the last part is the conclusion. Conclusion The passive model was enhanced based on properties following by prem sustainability assessment. The passive model had 18% energy savings of the base model in summer, 2% in winter, and 10% in spring. The strategy number one thermal mass model has achieved additional savings of energy load compared to the passive model. Shading parts are suggested to be added. Strategy number two uh, skylight model consumed more energy than passive model but enhanced the temperature and comfort levels due to ventilation effect. Strategy number three sun space model enhanced the energy efficiency and thermal comfort in winter only but it is not effective in summer. To enhance the design vegetation and trees are suggested to be added to reduce the effect of summer sun in the sun space.